If you've been following my journey through Path of Exile, you should know that I currently embarked on a no build guide SSF run. I did so because the majority of the time, and actually not just in Path of Exile, but all the games I play, I typically will follow a build guide. Uh, however, I wanted to elevate my knowledge in, in Path of Exile. And I also wanted to debunk the theory that Path of Exile's learning curve is so steep that you need to be have a PhD in the game. And people stay away from this game because of it. So I wanted to basically show people that it is possible, even for like a noob like me, to play this game without a guide. Now, in no way am I saying there's no steep learning curve in Path of Exile. Please don't take that the wrong way. However, my hope is two things with me and this challenge. Number one, personally, I want to elevate my knowledge and I want to get better at Path of Exile. And two, I'm hoping that me making a video journal of this on my YouTube channel will hopefully inspire you or someone else to do the same and give Path of Exile a try. Because I really do think it'll be time well spent. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand some people just don't have the time nor the will to grind a grindy game. So I get that. But for those of you that are on the fence that do have the time, maybe this will inspire you to do the same. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my day one progress, and I will continue to do so throughout the periods and checkpoints of my progress. So in day one, I had a lot of fun. And before we get into my progress, I have to say it was a lot of fun. And it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Anyway, let's get into my day one progress. Now, the premise behind my SSF no build guide run was basically that I was going into the fact that I wanted to make a build around a specific skill. And that specific skill was Frostblades. I had previously played it in one of my softcore runs in the Settlers League. And although I just used it temporarily for my leveling process, I really did like the skill. So I had this premonition of wanting to see if I could turn the Frostblade into a skill that worked like Lightning Strike. And again, I have a Lightning Strike character in the Settlers League. Uh, so I wanted to see, let me try Frostblades. I really like the skill. I like how it feels. I like how it plays. And let me see if I can build a skill around that. So that was the premise behind going in to my very first no build guide SSF run. So we started on the beach and I started started as a duelist and on the beach of course hillock you got to get through him and we managed to beat him we didn't die on the beach we didn't become a statistic and once we killed hillock we were off to the races now prior to heading out and starting the campaign i had done some mule runs to try to get some base gear and weapons for my no, my challenge run here so I spent probably five or 10 minutes in town prior to starting the campaign run because I wanted to use Frostblades right from the beginning. And I have to say, I was a little bit concerned because of everything that I had read about the duelist really being a poor leveler. But I chose the duelist just because I'm used to leveling the duelist and I'm comfortable with it. I started off leveling with Frostblade, with Double Strike, and with Molten Strike right from the get-go because I just wanted to get a feel for those skills. And I have to say, Frostblades started popping right from the get-go. And another thing that I spent a lot of time in town with was just making sure I had... I was more concerned about two things. Number one, getting the right socket colors, links, and then can I get mobility on my boots? Now, initially, I couldn't, but down the road, I 
did. I got 10, 10% more mobility uh, movement speed, which helped a little bit. We eventually got Leap Slam, which just elevated the, the experience and made it much more quicker to level up areas. Now, I have to say it was a little bit of a slow start in the sense that I kind of reverted to my old habits of not running through an area and just killing through everything and going through the whole map, which is a bad habit that I have. But as we progressed through Act 2 and Act 3, I got uh, I got a lot smarter and was just going to the checkpoints that I needed to go to in order to expedite the leveling process. But I have to say, Frostblades was hammering and doing really well. It was very comfortable and very quick playthrough for the first three acts on day one. And probably my most feared thing about this playthrough was obviously the skill tree. And when I got started getting my first skill points, I assessed the situation and I immediately noticed for the duelist right off the start on the tree, I noticed that there were two things that I wanted to fast track to, and that is the mana flows and bravery skills in the skill tree that provide increased mana, mana regeneration, and life and vision rating and armor. So that's kind of was my first thought was like, okay, I want to get to these nodes on the skill tree to give me that extra life and mana regen. Uh, so that was kind of my first strategy with the skill tree. And then I kind of just evolved into going to nodes that I thought was going to provide that extra damage and extra defense. We also, um, I'm going to get into this later, but we also then went into Axe Mastery and I'll explain that later. I have to say, I really didn't have any problems with the Act 1 boss, the Act 2 boss. Really uh, non-issues. I didn't have that much of a problem. And like I said, my first day one experience, I found it to be very smooth, very enjoyable. And I have to say, I'm really happy that I chose Frostblades and to work around that skill and try to see if I can build something around it. Okay, so this is how we left day one. We are currently in Act 3, and this is my character. We made it to level 28. Here are my, I have 44 int, 99 strength, 133 dexterity, and of course, Frostblades, which is my main DPS. We're just under 800 DPS per hit. And my defenses, well, they're nothing to talk about. I haven't even looked at the resistances, which... I've, I've learned a hard way that I need to start paying attention to that. So that's probably going to be an area of focus moving forward through the campaign. My chance to hit is at 100%, which I'm being told is very important as a melee build. And by the way, thank you, GGG, for making melee great again. I'm really enjoying these melee builds that I'm playing. Okay, now for my skill tree. So like I alluded earlier i saw immediately when i came into the skill tree when i was <clears throat> assigning my points i am these two nodes caught my attention and when i saw life and mana i'm like okay i got a beeline for them um so obviously i wanted to get some strength up before doing that and then i went into here and we got Destroyer for the added physical damage. And I'm I'm wielding a two-handed weapon. So this one also got my attention. And who doesn't like to be a Destroyer? Um, and then we wanted to get to this Axe Mastery. Because I'm going to be wielding a two-handed Axe. This is for the campaign. This is not endgame. So this is what caught my attention so we beelined it down to here and then we wanted to someone in chat mentioned that you know if you get endurance charge and frenzy charges you're going to notice a substantial big difference he referred to it as you're going to be like a godlike player uh so we i beelined it over here and that's kind of where we stopped 
and we'll see where the rest of the journey takes us. There are some things that I want to be lying to, but we'll cover that in the next video. So this is basically my day one skill tree. And I want to make a comment about this theory of how overwhelming Path of Exile, specifically the skill tree is. And please, again, I'm not saying that it's easy and that it's a piece of cake and that it's not overwhelming. It absolutely is intimidating when you first come here. Now, for those of you that are not familiar, this is one massive skill tree. However, each class, and for my case, the dualist, has its starting point. So these are all different starting points for all the different classes. So when you look at it from that perspective, it's not that daunting. Anyway, so for me, the dualist, this is where you start. And this is basically where I ended up in day one. And I have to say, I'm very happy with how we progress through the skill tree. I thought I was going to be spending a lot of time on this, like half an hour, 30 minutes assigning each skill point. And that wasn't the case because basically when you know which nodes you want to go towards, it kind of guides you on what you need to do to get to where you want to go, if that makes any sense. So uh, I have to say so far, so good. Who knows? Maybe I'm going to stumble on this in the future, but I'm happy so far with how the skill tree progressed and how it's performing in game. And as far as my skills, basically we have the main damage, which is frost blades. And then I have molten strike, which I am sparingly using. I'm not using it a lot actually. And my favorite, which is really making the leveling process and going through the campaign a breeze and that's leap slam just whizzing by all the areas. Great, great, great leveling skill. So my two movement skills are dash and of course, leap slam, which I'm using 99% I'm using leap slam and the odd occasion, like for boss fights and stuff, I'm using dash just to get away out of uh, harm's way. And that's basically that as far as auras, I am using Herald of Ice, which buffs cold damage, which is adding to my damage. And I'm using Precision, which grants accuracy and crit. So as a melee build, you don't want to miss your hits. So this gives me more accuracy and crit strike chance. So I hit my enemies. Um, so those are the two auras that I'm using and are helping are being really, really good. As far as gear, I have a wood splitter right now that's got increased fizz damage and adds fizz damage. Unfortunately, it's got fire damage. Uh, I wish it was cold damage, um, but we rolled this with an essence. We took this base and I slammed a essence on it that gave a physical attribute to it. And this is what it rolled. And I'm very happy with it. We currently are, this is my helm, which is giving me life and it's giving me fire and lightning res. And again, this is just stuff that I'm using that's dropped. It's not like this is the end all the be all. It's just the best of what I've gotten so far. Uh, I have a simple robe, which is giving me life, regenerate life, maximum mana, and it reflects melee da uh, physical damage to melee attackers i have this amulet which is just for mana life regen um and increase of rarities found and i got a mana ring and elemental damage with attacks and then i have this coral ring which is giving me life another beautiful thing it's giving me physical damage to attacks which is what i need increased cold damage when i saw that i'm like yes increased cast speed and life almost 100 life when this thing dropped i was like wow the gods are with me uh, this is a nice little find so early on and then 
some of these attributes on the gauntlets don't apply to my build but it's the best that i have so far i like the attack speed i like the additional life although it's a low amount uh the regenerate life is beautiful and the lightning resistance of course any resistance you can get early on of course is going to be helpful and again life strength and outside of that the elemental damage with attacks which is good and these are the only boots that i've managed to find no vendor has had movement speed uh for me to purchase this is the best that i have so i got magic boots it does have cold res on it but obviously because of the 10 percent increased movement speed that's the best that i could find right now and we're basically just still basics on the flasks. We're running, uh, obviously, the uh, life flasks. These are the mana flasks. And, of course, uh, Quicksilver for the increased movement speed. So, so far, so good. I got to say, the damage with the Wit Splitter, Frost Blades is, like I said, it's been really smooth. Now, I've taken on some crazy enemies and we have died several times actually um and you know other than that it's been very smooth very nice excuse me i'm having a lot of fun it was a great first day okay well there you have it folks that's my day one journey uh i have to say like i said earlier it was a lot of fun uh i have I i'm really really shocked and surprised on how smooth it went it was a re it was really fun i one of my worries going into this challenge prior to, prior to me embarking on it tonight was that i was really concerned about getting bogged down in the minutia of the skills and the tree and how to pick and where to go and i have to say pleasantly surprised how smooth it went. Now, I do want to say thank you to my community and to chat tonight who were there providing their advice and assistance. And it was a lot of fun and they were a lot of help. So I do have that luxury as a content creator and live uh, and, and as a streamer, sorry, that my community and chat, whoever's there with me on stream can provide insight and tips so i do want to say that 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 was a big help uh, they pro they gave me a lot of tips they gave me some recipes that i was not aware of well actually sorry take that back i was aware of it but i forgot them um so having people with five ten fifth ten years of sorry of experience in this game in my community in my chat giving me tidbits, but not backseat gaming. It was a very good balance. They weren't intrusive. They were just adding to me learning the game. And I love the fact that we can have a really good conversation. I asked a lot of questions and I asked those questions because I want to not only learn, but I really want to understand the mechanics of this game. So it was a 10 out of 10 from my perspective, I learned a lot and I'm hoping that that is just going to continue. And to be honest, that's the point of why I want to do this journey. Anyway, that'll do it for me, everybody. If you want to watch my journey, obviously you can watch it on my YouTube channel. I'm going to be making videos like this at certain checkpoints throughout my playthrough. But you can watch me live on Twitch. Channel name is Sammy Caps. I live stream every evening come we got a cool chill community come over say hello we'd love we'd love to have you anyway that'll do it for my day one guys day one no build guide ssf run we made it through day one boys let's see what the rest of the journey is gonna hold for us all right thanks for watching everybody take care the opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine healthy debate is always encouraged hate is never welcomed. So get over it.